problem we're doing says if f of x equals ax squared plus bx minus 14, determine a and b so that the graph of f will have a relative maximum at the point negative 4, 18. Do this without a calculator, then check your answer by graphing the equation on the calculator. So we want this equation to have a relative maximum at negative 4, 18. So first of all, if I plug negative 4 in for x in this equation, what should the f of x value come out to? 18. Negative 8, or 18. Yep. So they're giving you an x and a y, or an x and an f of x. So you can get one equation by plugging in negative 4 for x and 18 for f of x. Let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit. 18 equals, this would be a times 16, so 16a. Plus negative 4 times b, so that'd be minus 4b, minus 14. We're supposed to try to find a and b. Do you think there's any way we can figure out a and b with just having one equation? No. When you, want to, when you have two variables to solve for, you normally need two equations. So we need to come up with another equation. Well, if, if uh, this is a parabola, right? Because if the highest exponent is x squared. So at the maximum, would this parabola, what, what would the derivative be at the maximum? Zero. Zero. Yeah. The derivative would be zero because the slope would be zero. What would the x-coordinate be? Negative four. Yeah. So what we can do is plug negative four into the derivative and we should get zero because the slope should be zero at the maximum. So let's do the derivative now. So f prime of x equals, so what's the derivative of ax squared? Remembering a is some constant. 2ax. 2ax, good. What's the derivative of bx? b is a constant. b. Good. What's b? What's the derivative of minus 14? Zero. Zero. Okay. Now, here's the logic again. We said that since we know that a maximum occurs when x equals negative 4, we know this, and it's a parabola, so we know it's not going to have a sharp corner or point or anything crazy like that. We know it's going to have a slope or derivative of zero. So our derivative is going to equal 0 when x is negative 4. So I can simplify that and get 0 equals negative 8a plus b. Add 8a to both sides. 8a is equal to b. <coughs> Any questions about that part? Question? Or? No. No? Okay. Now, we have two equations and two variables. How could we use these two equations together to maybe figure out what a and b represent? Plug okay. a into a. Right, plug 8a in for b. Substitution, b is equal to 8a. So every place I see a b up here, I can substitute in 8a. So I'm going to have 18 equals 16a minus 4. In place of b, I'm going to plug in 8a because b equals 8a. I can do that. I could add 14 to both sides. That's going to give me 32 equals 16a minus 4 times 8 would be 32a. So 32 equals negative 16a. Divide by negative 16 on both sides. What's a going to equal? Negative two. Negative two. <laughs> now, does that surprise you that we got a negative number? If it's a parabola and has a maximum, what shape do you expect it to be? Yeah. If it's a parabola, because it's the highest exponent is x squared, if it has a maximum, we're expecting it to be concave down, aren't we? So we're expecting a negative a value, because a negative a value means the parabola is going to frown, right? It's going to be upside down, concave down. Okay. Once I have a, how do I find b? Right. Plug negative 2 in for a right here now. So 8 times negative 2 equals b. So negative 16 is your b value. Now to check your work, just go up to your original function, f of x, for 
for A, we're going to plug in negative 2. For B, we're going to plug in negative 16. And we have minus 14. You just graph this. You can graph it on your graphing calculator. And then go to the point negative 418 and make sure that's really maximum. If it is, then you know you did it correctly. Any questions?